I went to see Freddy, and it was in fact the last time that I saw him. He said to me, I haven't given you anything in my will. You're my executor. You can do anything with my legacy. You can do anything with my music, but never make me boring. We might as well be deaf and dumb and blind. The great thing is we still have his music to remember him by and some wonderful footage to uh, remember that uh, Freddie Mercury was something special. The fact that time is running out for us all. The last time I saw Freddie was uh, Anita and I went round to see him and he was in bed uh, with the curtains open so he could see out into his garden. I think I was talking about things that were in his garden, saying, oh, look, that's really interesting, that's really... And he said, guys, um, you don't need to feel like you need to make conversation. He said, you know, I'm just so happy that you're here, you know, so even if we say nothing, it's just having these moments. Time waits for nobody. There's all these rumors, and he was obviously suffering, and we didn't know what it was, and rumor, rumor, rumor. And so he did sit us down at one point, and he said, look, you probably know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm suffering from. You know what the problem is, but I don't want to talk about it anymore. I just want to make music till the day I fucking die. And let's get on with it. We've got to build this world together or we'll have no more future at all. Special award for an outstanding contribution to British music goes to John Deacon, Brian May, Freddie Mercury, Roger Taylor, Queen. The thing that annoyed me more than anything was a shot of Freddie in the sun. And he'd just come out of the doctors, I think. And it was really grainy, full-page shot. Is this man dying? I thought, you fucking wankers. Nobody. The first indications that something wasn't right was Freddie looked a little thinner to me. And I called John up to see what was going on. I said, there's something wrong with Freddie, and he wouldn't tell me. We hid everything, and we uh, avoided questions. Yeah, I guess we lied, <laughs> because we wanted to protect him. Oh, yes, I'm the great pretender. It became difficult to work in London because there was such a, a terrible focus of attention on him. There's people sticking cameras through his toilet windows, so, you know, as soon as the rumors were out there. So Montreux was a much more peaceful place to work, so we ended up doing a lot of stuff there. He was determined to work right up to the last minute. So I, w I was surprised that he did Going Slightly Mad. Which I thought was a good video, actually, and, and it had lots of um, humour in it. I'm slightly mad. Well, you know, Freddie had some strong ideas, and uh, in the absence of any other really good ideas, then you, you know, you go with it. Well, because he's, he's very perfectionist and always wants to do, he always wants to do things in a big way. You know, he doesn't want to do anything sort of that would be considered, you know, small time or, you know. So, uh, I mean, whereas to some of us, you know, the ideas seem a bit uh, grandiose or over the top or, you know, you know we, and we sometimes have to argue about these things. It does make it more difficult, you know, because we, uh, you know, uh, to have goals set because uh, we've achieved a lot anyway. In terms of traditional sort of, you know, you know, achievement, we have achieved a tremendous amount. Yes, you do ask how long it's going to go on, really, and we've, we, I mean, been doing it a long time now. And uh, I don't know. I, I really, if I could tell the future, um, uh, life would be quite boring, I think. There's no living in my life anymore. Roger, what did you do? It was just really a very close time. Oh, for me, yeah. Freddie found an amazing tranquility, and I never really heard him complain. I remember we went out one night, um, and he had horrible problems with his leg. And uh, I think Freddie saw me looking at it, and he said, oh, Brian, do you want to see what it's like? And, and, he, and he showed me. And I think, and he reacted to my face, and he said, I'm really sorry. He said, I didn't mean to do that to you. I never heard him go, this is really awful, my life is shit, you know, I'm gonna die. Never, 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 never. He was an amazingly strong person.
the sicker Freddie got, the more he seemed to need to record to give himself something to do, you know, some sort of reason to get up. He would make it in whenever he could. So it really, it was a quite a period of fairly intense work, actually. I'm taking my ride with destiny, willing to play my part. You know, Freddie's becoming weakened by this horrible disease, and he finds it hard to stand up a lot of the time. But he'll throw a couple of vodkas down, and he would prop himself up on the mixing desk and have his mic there and go for it. Roll camera, roll playback. Sometimes I get to feel He was dying, and he did those things, and he knew he would be dead when they were finished. Because he said to me, I'm going to sing it now, because I can't wait for them to do the music on this. I give it to you on a drum machine. Give me a drum machine thing. They'll finish it off. I don't want to make no way. Every time I gave him another line, he would sing it, sing it again, and sing it again. So we had three takes for, for every line, and that was it. I long for peace or I die. Mother, Mother Love, I think, was the last one. There's an ex exceptional spine-chilling note in the middle. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's a fantastic bit of singing. Out in the city, in the cold world outside. It's absolutely. It's uh, spine chilling. And we got to the last verse and he said, oh, I'm not up to this now. I need to go away and have a rest. He said, I'll come back and finish it off, you know. And he never came back. That was the last moment that I had with him in the studio. The worst thing was I was actually on my way to see him when I was about 300 yards away when Peter Freestone uh, rang me to tell me don't bother coming because he's gone. Goodbye everybody I've got to go If my if my record reaches you out of Mongolia Destroy, exactly, see? De destro destroy it, just like that. I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, Freddie, I knew you were explosive, but not that explosive. <laughs> I mean, really? Did you know you were that explosive? <laughs> I can make a bigger bang than that, dear, I'll tell you. <laughs>